We'll just Roaches. hit it. You hit it. Da, 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 da. Roaches. Pet fucking. And I'm going to leave it there. And hey, how y'all doing, y'all? What's going on this week, man? Pat not fucking roaches, though. He just fucking. No, no. No, not roaches. No. No, 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 no. Leave them, leave them out of off, bitches off, alone. Off, off from a roach. My niggas ain't fucking no ghetto roaches. Mm -mm. Ain't hood rats no more. They're ghetto roaches. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to make it. That's all I am. <laughs> I I just trying to make it. Trying to make it. Just trying to make it. Just trying there, to make it. Clap. Jiggle, that nigga over there, a gigolo, selling his ass for room and room. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? That hurt. That hurt. I feel disrespected. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I feel so, <laughs> feel so fucking disrespected. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Jesus. I ain't mean no disrespect. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. What's going on? Is this me? Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I think this is me. Mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm. Flanging oh, that thing on for a house. No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay. I was, Did I froze? I was, I was chilling out. I was calming down right then. I had it. I was in the pocket. I was there. I was like, okay, we there. We good. I done got it on my system. <laughs> God damn it, man. <laughs> Oh God, man! And the tears come streaming down. Tears stream <laughs> down your face. Uh, oh God! Yes, no. <laughs> oh man, dude, dude. Yes, no. You know Jimmy Valvano yes. always said, "You gotta laugh and you gotta cry. You gotta be moving and all that every day." So I, I. Uh, yeah, nigga from Trinidad, as I said, is all about smiles and frowns. Oh God, damn, yo! Excuse me, Lord Jesus. Oh man, you okay, oh. everybody? Yeah, man, that was good time. I I don't know if the podcast, if, if it like this part of the podcast, people gonna just skip all through this. They gonna just be like, well, when do he say what's up, guys? Cause oh, it's just nothing but be <laughs> laughing and like like one like like four or five words sentences and then just well, shit, laugh laugh the and, then, I'm laugh and, then, and then a quote and then laughter and then <laughs> another four or five sentences and there's no context around it so people just like what the fuck that's what the news they fucking they like the fucking and roaches and gigolos I, I don't understand what's the, what's the content what's Pop. going on here. Pie Squad, it was hell of a pre-recording before we hit record. <laughs> I just came into the just just came into the phone. Just know this. And then jokes fly. What you coming into? Just know <laughs> this. Hey, hey, chat has got some cool. Look at him blushing. Look at that nigga blushing. No, that's what you know. That's what you know. I'm not doing it. No, the funny thing. Watch it. Watch it. Doing anything. It would be one thing if I was doing something. But I'm not doing anything. At all. I'm not doing anything. At all. Look at his face. At all. Look at look at him. Look at him. Look at his face. Oh man! Hey, Pat. damn thing. So nothing, not even a not that even a finger diddle, not even a finger diddle. No, not a thing. Not even a not even a nipple lick. Nope. You ain't sucked a toe. I don't. I don't do that. <laughs> That's not my I'm thing. Just going don't, down don't, the list. I'm just going down the list. Not, <laughs> not, a, not a not a not an accidental drunk kiss. No, man, no. 
Oh. No. No, oh. nothing. Oh, I thought you said. Not a thing. But no, no it's not part of the camera, okay. so we can't see okay. his face. Okay. No. Respect. Maybe, Respect. no. Maybe you, you found around. the unicorn, unicorn of all situations. I got you. Well, that's great. Very I, nice. I applaud I, that. No, I, I, I am always in the unicorn of situations. Some odd reason. All right, hold on. For some odd how, reason, how, I'm always in it. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you a, 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 a real question? How, do, well, not even a question. Like, I just want to see if you realize how, like, unique of a situation you are in, in America, mm-hmm. in any race or any, like, context, right? You got that glow. You are a man <laughs> who is living with a woman, right? Who works for said woman? Who takes care of said woman's kids? Yet has no relationship with said woman, and said woman allows you to live with her. No effect on her relationships, whether it be with a woman or a man. And she and she's cool with this. Do you realize that that is so rare that neither one of you has like any umbrage with the other and how rare this... that is in America society? Like I've yes. never heard of this shit. Yes. You are, you are the <laughs> we, we just had a great co- white, white rhino. We just had a conversation. White rhino. We, great white rhino. We, we just had a conversation that, about this. Like you are the first, you are the first fully platonic, non-gay, um, non. It's Pat, damn it! Like non, like uh, sexual agreements, pay under the table type weird. You know what I'm saying? Like non, like that's the first legal platonic heterosexual like situation. And friendship I, that has ever existed that is that also involves business because like usually at some point somebody would be like okay I don't want to have business tied to it because we friends or like you're you're like defying like eight different laws of American see, society. See, I just want certain, you to realize that certain situations and play cause this to actually happen and work out or whatever and. It's oh, I, I don't want to say too much you want to. You business. You know what I'm saying? Want to. It's, it's too much. I'm gonna business say business. what I'm gonna say, but you don't have to divulge anything. Like, don't. But yes. just let me put it out there. This is Pat we're talking about. This is all. all on, this is all. This is all recording right now. This is all going have, out to the pod squad. So I have plenty, so you plenty of platonic Pat with. stories, man. I have plenty of platonic Pat stories. Plenty of I, them. see. I have never well, like, what the fuck? What what well, I have mastered these, is what the fuck going on here? I do you do you not think she's attractive? No, that's not the case. See, for me, I've been able to do it if I don't think the person is attractive. I had no right. issue with it. If I like if I'm not attracted to her, then it becomes like any other nigga because I'm not attracted to them either. So it just be like, hey, you just blend in with the group, it, like another sheep in the you, in the herd, but if there's I'm an attraction, not. man, you ain't cool. man, you ain't chilling nowhere, unless you fuck one of my niggas, or you are like cool with my girl. Then you automatically become like the same as first said category. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm it's but no, I've never I... heard of it. Like my friends, I don't know any. Like I don't know no niggas that be chilling with girls like that. That either they not trying to fuck or they're. Or that they find attractive, like I just never seen it, especially not with I'm, business involved. Money, oh shit! It's me myself. My face will tell mm-hmm. you. Me being platonic friend to female is is something that's not how I say out of the ordinary. 
I'm I'm used to that. I just be in situations where I just be around beautiful people and we just click in a certain Make way. That's it. it. That's it. Shut Make up, baby. It. This, this is my question. This is my question to you as a man, right? All right. Mm -hmm. If you were in a if you were in like uh <coughs> hey, we we about to get married relationship or something like that, or this my boo, or I see this being the future, cool, whatever, right? I would understand your answer in all of these platonic situations throughout your life. Uh -huh. My uh, I think something that you should shed light on, though, is to like men in general, because again, like this is I, not I, something I, that is just me. Like I, this, let me formulate the question so I can set it up so you can just have the floor and okay. go. Because I think this is something that the average, the average man needs to be able to hear. Because there's some gems that you could probably drop on this. Just put on the, I'll put out there. I'm what? not the average guy, and I'm I, in general, but I'm still, a little bit still, tweaked. That may be the that may be the key to some some type of a strategy though that can help mm. other men reach that level of enlightenment almost you know what i'm saying like that's a very elevated stance to have so like I i'm giving you kudos here i want to be clear like this is a like that's a very respectable <clears throat> thing that not a lot of dudes can do and it's something that i personally have never even attempted to do like if i find you attractive you just ain't my friend if like I have to make you unattractive to me for, for, in order for you to be my friend. You know All what I'm right. saying? So that that's never been something. And, and most men that I know in my life, whether it been as kids when we were in like elementary school, grade school, whatever, growing up, and you know, even as adults, like I've just never known many men that was like, I can hang with this girl, and I find her attractive. And we've never fucked, and now I'm just cool because now I've already got it out of my system. It's like there's always been like some caveat to it. Like I'm friends with her because she's gay. I'm friends with her because the dude gay. I'm friends with her because we already fucked, and now it's kind of out of both of our system because we know what each other like. We done dated or something, and we just don't like each other like that no more because we didn't we realize what it is, you know what I'm saying? But it's never been like, there's nothing, 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 nothing. And we hang out all the time. And I find you attractive. And neither one of us tries anything. Like I've seen it where even like the dude may be like, I'm attracted to her, but I ain't gonna try nothing, I'm chilling. But it's almost like because somebody in their mind has that in their mind, there's an energy and a tension that forms like, because humans are humans and pheromones are pheromones and all of that shit. Like there's a biological and a physiological thing that happens where eventually either the girl tries something on the dude or the dude tries something on the girl. So how do you manage those relationships repeatedly? Like how, how have you been successful? One, I'm not human. I'm joking. All right. <clears throat> Two, all right. This, is, this is what you got to understand or whatever. I've been around women all my life, like whole, first off, that's one factor. My whole mom's side of the family is nothing but women or whatever, period. The first true best friend I had was my female cousin. Hold on one so second. that's one thing. First female friend, female cousin. Face, can I ask you a question real quick before Peck goes on further? Are you a person that has been repeatedly able to have platonic friends with females that you've found attractive or they found you attractive and neither one of you made a move? Like it's been just straight platonic between both of you the entire time. Somebody I found attractive. Like, no, yeah, attractive. like you like, oh, oh, she, oh, she right. Or she or in the same token, she finds you to be right. And y'all never make a move on each other. Neither, neither person like like because Pat is saying that they're just like they've never been that. And you're yeah, saying say as it. well as I've witnessed, Pat has also had a lot of relationships like this where neither one makes them like they just be friends. So like I I, I wouldn't say you, you do that. I I wouldn't say on multiple occasions, but I've had I've had the opportunity, and yeah, I've had been just straight platonic friends with 
a female that was attractive, but I just had no interest in interest at all in her at all. Like <laughs> zero zilch. Yeah. <laughs> but we were cool. Like we were like we had some of the same interests. We could talk we could talk like niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Last question, and I'm gonna shut up. I'm sorry. I actually mute myself. When it comes to that, do you think about what it would be like, or do you think about making a move and just never do it, or is it there's never a move thought about? Like for me, with any platonic friends that I've had with girls, it was like I didn't think about the move. Like there wasn't, there was no thing but I also didn't I wasn't into them like they weren't like my thing like I wasn't like oh you you right no you was like oh you just personally. another homie like you a nigga you know, me personally I've called it like as growing up like everybody be like, I don't have the type but as we grow up we all find out what we actually like and the motherfuckers that I look back on that was female <laughs> that I considered like just straight my female friends like a nigga like there was nowhere near what I would consider my type. They may have been attractive females, but just because you're attractive don't mean you fall to my realm or what I classify as attractive to me. You feel me? Like being attractive and being attractive to me be totally two different things because Beyonce is attractive, but she ain't attractive to me. It was like that's not my that's type. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's what I agree. Like, yeah, yeah, my, yeah, she yeah, ain't yeah. My that's type. What I mean. So I mean, like my type is exactly what my wife is: short, thick, with glasses. If she didn't wear glasses, it'd be a fucking problem because you got to wear glasses. So that's a, that's a thing with me. Like, sorry, but none of my female friends, I don't think any of them ever wore glasses. I think one wore glasses, but even her, like, you may be attractive, but you ain't attractive to me. And that's the thing, like, most people can't understand or, like, even females, they can't wrap their head around. But she look good, you look good. I can't believe y'all. No, nah, motherfucker just ain't my cup of tea. <clears throat> Like just because everybody looks right, good don't right, mean right. they look they just because two people look good don't mean they got to have something between each other. Um, no, I never had the thought to make the move because it didn't, the thought never even crossed my mind because it's just like it's energies. I, I say it's like energies when it comes to those situations, like with with the move. Like when it's a female that you know that you want to make a move on, it's a certain energy that you feel emanating from that person, and the same energy may emanate from you to that person. But when it's something purely platonic, it's like the energy level is like on zero. It's like nothing's felt but friendship there. You feel me? Like it's like a kindred spirit, but in the same realm as the same sex. You feel me? So oh, I definitely same type, same type of shit. I can go do with y'all niggas. I can go do with them th those plutonic female friends I used to have. Yeah. So Right. Same way, and same I way. Like we get up, and, we get up and have a cycle. <clears throat> same thing I do with them. Get up and have a cycle. Joke and peace out. That's it. So. And I think that's where the, the the thing that I'm uh, and this is where Pat, this is where you take the floor here, brother. I think that's the confusing mm -hmm. part for me. Like I've grown up around a bunch of women. I definitely had a similar experience with. I think all three of us have kind of grown up in a very matriarchal family structure and like early growth environment i guess where like women were kind of the leads um i also think though that this is where again pat you take the floor oh. i've never <clears throat> been attracted to any of my platonic female friends like Faye said like they've like i've had some friends where like other dudes been like oh she bad and then i look at her and be like all right I, yeah if that's what you like uh, you know what I'm saying? So I, I definitely got what Face was saying when he was like, like, she may be attractive, but not attractive to me. Like, I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I, I definitely get that. Um, but I think that that was that's the unique piece about the one you was talking about, Face, and the ability that Pat has had where he's been able to have girls that he was attracted to, but not I I don't know. How, it, yeah, you explain sir, it from there, Pat. Make it, sir. Sometimes what? I just gotta let me oh. out. You know, face is oh, just gonna I'm say sorry. random stuff. What the, how about? How about? No, we not about to skip through that word. Like, what the fuck was that face? 
how you oh, just throw this in I asked this here. nigga about the girl. He about to explain about like how he could be <laughs> this nigga to naked. What? Oh, what Pet, <laughs> you want to explain why I say naked? This is the wildest podcast ever. This is great. You want to explain why I say <laughs> naked? I don't know how this is going to sound. I'm an artist. This is entertaining. The human, the, the, the things that I see are all art. So if I see a new woman, it's just art to me. And some women feel that from me, so they feel comfortable enough to be comfortable around me. See, that's Even why I always got in trouble. Girls always got comfortable <clears throat> being draw, draws came off. I mean, that's sometimes that happens. Hey, anybody had Some, draws coming all around me, girl. Uh-uh. Sometimes that uh-uh. happens, but me, I'm a person <laughs> face, where face, you, you know, you understand. Face understand. He get it. We just trying to cheat. I understand it all. What you doing? What you doing? I understand she it all. Oh, initiate. Oh my god. For me, for me, she has to initiate. There has to. You have to t- something. Oh, I'm not going to get into it because it's been too many times. Where if I go ahead and initiate in that thing, then it wasn't it wasn't even that. You know what I'm saying? So instead, so after a few times of that happening in my life, I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna live life and just let shit happen the way it is. If stuff happens, it happens. If it didn't happen yet, it's not supposed to happen. If it happens later in the future, who the fuck cares? I'm not in the future right now. But in this situation. Sometimes you meet people in your life and you can tell that they're going somewhere, that this person is, they, they figured out something or whatever. And I can learn from this person and, and to get to the goal that I, I want to go to. And it. so it's not that will thing that mentor meant me. It's, it's, and I mean, and it's, it's a back and forth with that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm older or whatever, so it might be, but she's been in the game and done a lot of things with business and talked to millionaires on a regular or whatever. You teach her life, she teach you business. Y'all are symbiotic relationship. I got you now. Exactly. Exactly. And Ah. if I'm, and it's a transactional experience technically, but. It's built off of the fact that y'all are also able to like coexist and be cool with each other. Yeah, like, we, actually enjoy each other's company. I got you. I'm, I'm I'm not thirsty, man. I'm not thirsty, and that's another thing. See, I be in situations where the the dudes that want to get at her are hating on me because I'm always around. This nigga and always been around, man. The fuck? Because nigga, that's my job. <laughs> the reason why she. You know what? You know what they probably me. They should have grown. They want to be me. Grown up to the mall with me and face. Uh, it's not that no. You don't have no, to be the, it's really easy, and when you learn that at like twelve and 13, 14 years old, makes the rest of life pretty pretty damn simple. Yeah, and I mean, you realize he's, all he's you got to do is go to the candy store and get a blow pop, and you can get a whole slew of girls. See, sometimes yeah. with See, see times with men, their ego override their goals. I'm not the person that let mm. their ego override their goal. <laughs> so let 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 me let me explain. Hold on, more. let me mute I'm, myself. Go ahead, preach. Go ahead, preach back. Let God, me, damn. I I'm not a person that let my ego override my goals because I've seen too many times y'all niggas let y'all ego make a fucking fool of yourselves the reason why she hired me is because it was too many niggas down here making a fool of themselves expecting something that they won't going to get in the first fucking place and really she's trying to get a business going so 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 what if i'm not messing with her here's the other thing here's the other person of the job because she trusts me that much, she trusts me with her female friends. There's a lot of them. And they're not ugly. See, that's what I y'all knew don't it was understand. a play in there. I knew it was a play in there somewhere. I okay. See, never mind. 
See, no which y'all don't I get, understand. I, I get the angle. I get the angle now. <laughs> which y'all don't understand. <laughs> which y'all don't understand is you ain't I fucking am not with the thirsty. I'm not thirsty. I'm not thirsty. I, I whatever oh, comes my oh, whatever comes my way. Let me uh, let me let me explain something about Pat real quick that most don't know. Over See, there, it up I, I've, I've, lived, I've, lived, I've lived with Pat for uh, me and Pat yeah, used to be roommates, man. And me and Pat was just my road dog, man. Twenty some years we've been friends, man. Twenty some years. Now I've seen Pat do a lot of shit. But the most thing I've seen Pat with is a lot of females. Not not just females in relationships, female friends. Pat has been around so many strippers, I've lost count. In college, but they cool. And, 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 and just, in college, and just, I used to use like he used, like he used this woman. He get the girls off of her. I used to get. Oh, you got all these friends? Hey, friends! I'm tears. Hey, <laughs> come like, through, friends. What people don't come understand about friends. my good friend Pat <laughs> Pat One over here, man. Like, like Pat One is a serial platonic friend because it's with ease that he's always around these attractive women. Men who are thirsty and, and can't find that realm, in most cases, I, I, I say a good 60% of men out there who, who don't or can't understand what platonic friends is, is because they, they can't, they've never quenched their thirst. They're over thirsty. So anytime they're around attractive women, all they think about is trying to holler at them. It's a Pat, usual thing hand, for me. Pat, it's a usual hand, thing. And redirect. To be around. If it, 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 it's usual for him. Like I've seen Pat in all different type of damn situations. But like, damn, you you was what? Yeah, she was getting changed, and I was right there on the phone. I was, oh, okay, so you just got naked motherfuckers in front of you, and just that's just normal, huh? Okay, yeah, that's Can just you that's just that sixty percent statement. Mm hmm. You said what? Can you clarify that sixty percent part of the statement? 60% of men out there, I feel like, can't get the grasp around Plutonic friends. I can't friends get the grasp like, around it. No, no, because you can't, because you just said you have, you've had Plutonic friends before. But I won't attract it to them. I keep going back to that. That's the part that, that yeah. I don't... That, 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 see, that I get see this... Yeah. If I'm not attracted to them, yeah, that's, I can be that's, friends but, with anybody that I'm not but, attracted to. People but that I'm attracted to or that are to, attracted to me, that don't work. But are you gonna holler at everything you attract you attracted to? No, it ain't about hollering at everything I'm attracted to, but my experience tells me that things that I'm attracted to are usually attracted to me, and that usually sets up for a situation to happen, <laughs> even if I'm not the initiator, which then causes other right. problems. So I so from my right. experience, like again, right. you're talking again, and, and this is my alienation part of it. I grew up as a person that until an adult, I didn't holler at girls. I was very nervous about hollering at girls. I was very confident in myself, but about my game, I didn't really have any. I didn't feel like I was that suave ass nigga, even though girls thought I was cute. So what I experienced was growing up in preschool, I had my first girlfriend at three. Her name was Denise Fields, and she was a very attractive young lady. Shout out to me. a very attractive adult who was very cool as fuck. But that was my first girlfriend, and I didn't holler at her. She came up to me and hollered at me. So as a very and again, you're also talking to a person that was raised by all women who was the young was the only boy of a generation. So all my attention was, you're the man, you're great, you're this, you're special, you the king, you you gonna be one, you the prize. So I grew up really internalizing that message. So I was very like, well, whoever want me to holler at me, I guess. I mean, if can, somebody want to, hey, you go talk to her for me. If not, then I'll just sit here. And what I oh. grew up experiencing is if I was around, usually the girl that I like would end up hollering at me pretty much. Like me and Face, again, I... 
I grew up from th this type of experience. Me and Face would go to the mall. We would sit on a bench in front of Victoria's Secret, and girls would walk past. <laughs> we, would have, we would go to the candy store right before I would get a blow pop, and I would sit on the damn bench, and I would eat the blow pop. And as I ate the blow pop, girls would walk past, and I would just look at them. And as I looked at them, them and they group of girls would come over, and then they would be looking at me and Face, and then me and Face would look at each other, and we'd look back at them, and then they walk over, and they think we know. We going to the movie with some girls and suck on some titties. Titty. And this was kind of like every Saturday thing for most of my teenage years where I, we would, I would end up like I graduated. I went to a graduation party, started the graduation party with one girl hollering at me. In the middle of the graduation party, a whole nother girl was trying to holler at me. By the end of the night, I was fucking a whole nother girl. Pat, you you've seen this. I've been in the fucking club and been sitting there dancing by myself, and a girl just come and tongue me down. I do not understand these things. This is not me. I've been in the See. back seat of my homeboy's car. He pick up some random chick to take her to a bar. I'm sitting in the back seat, drunk as fuck, literally laid out over the seat, and the girl just slob it down like these are not I, I'm I, I'm gonna say I this. don't have a lot of experience with being around I, women that I'm attracted to I'm, and them not being attracted to me so I just stay away from women that I'm attracted to I don't because I know what the fuck gonna happen because I like I like and the ones I'm not attracted to they my friends I like looking at pretty things as an artist and most of the time that they're pretty they got pretty friends and then also I like, can mean, I, maybe I, that's the problem let me be, I can't draw for shit <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm good at music, but that that, that drawing shit, uh, I I can't. So maybe that's yeah, maybe like, like I don't have the ability to see having an art scene, man. People in the way you have, like you yeah, know what every, I'm everything is just colors and, and lights. Different. That that does make a difference. Everything's colors and lights, and then, and then and then me, I just I'm not I don't I don't care. <laughs> All right, <laughs> nigga, go ahead and learn how to draw. Hair. And then let's let's I'm gonna be real, man. Hanging around women, you learn things like game don't really exist. It don't. If the girl like you, she gonna laugh at all the stupid shit you say out your mouth and don't really think it's funny at all. If she if she if she sees something in you that benefits her. In some way, whether she likes you physically or she likes you financially or whatever, she's gonna listen to every corny thing that come out your mouth. Game don't exist. Game don't exist. You want know because if you say those same pimp phrases and give it to some random, just random cornball, they they not gonna come out right. <laughs> they just not. It don't exist. She like who See, she like. That's the thing. <laughs> and that, I've that learned me. to understand that. She like who she like. So, like, for me, right, what made my wife my wife, right, wasn't just the fact that I found her attractive. I found, I, I like, that's a thing that men do. Like, men and women find plenty of people attractive. Like, mm -hmm. what made her my wife is the fact that she was also, like, I liked her as a person. Like, I fucked with her and I found her attractive on a physical, you know, sexual type level. So that is, I think that is the part that I would love for you to illuminate. Like, how do you have a woman that you're attracted to that you spend lots of time around and you like her as a person and never be like, not, like, fuck thirst. Like, I ain't talking about you being some, like, old simp ass, ah, I'm gonna holler. Like, I'm talking about on just a realistic man-woman level. Like, this is just normal man-woman right. shit. Usually, a man and a woman who are attracted to each other, and they spend a massive amount of, this is why men and women cheat. This is why there are, that's why that's cheating is even a thing. This is why men and women get married. This is why there are relationships started because at some point the person that you were attracted to, oh, I actually like them too. I also look at I All also right. look at I also look at the consequences of my actions before I try to jump into it. 
A lot of men don't. So what I'm saying is it ain't that you wouldn't. It, it's just that because of all of the factors surrounding y'all relationship in general, it doesn't make sense. So I'm a fucking man. Y'all just leave this shit alone. I'm a fucking man. <laughs> you yeah. say you are none? Did you say you are I'm a none? fucking man. Man. Oh, okay. M A N. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's be real. Because I'm, I'm it. sitting there like, who is this Whoopi Goldberg ass sister act? I'm in the habit. Like, no, how are it's. You? I'm like, because I'm like, shed. How how does your brain operate? That I'm more but attracted now I get to my it. now. I I'm get more it. I, I'm I, more I, attracted I, to my future than anything. If I make it the way Capricorn I want to make it, in. yes, that logic, yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. Well, hold on. Well, A plus B, B could equal C, but it could also equal what the F, fuck is G, bleak? and F. <laughs> oh, you thought nobody was going to catch hold that on, shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you do? What the fuck is bleak? <laughs> hey, face, look at this great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <you> motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck the wrong nigga, that shit, nigga. I use that shit on everybody this week. <laughs> I was doing that shit. Look, I was doing that shit to people like it was this. Just because, oh, like, shit. Uh, shit, just, just oh, walking up to people. Hey, y'all. Hey, look at this nigga. Look at that nigga running. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Look, listeners. I am sorry this week. This is definitely one of them you want to watch on Spotify. <laughs> otherwise, none of this shit is going to make a bit of fucking sense to you. You're going to be like, what the fuck? This shit is definitely oh, visual boy. gags. Um, so, yeah. Hop your ass on Spotify real quick. No, man. I'm going to be quiet. Mm. Yeah, man. I'm about to go somewhere with it that I don't need to go. So, y'all. We're going to go ahead and get into the show. Hey, man, look, I know this is like 30, 40 minutes in, but hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> A show with three friends. Separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having a weekly conversation that you can join in on. Um, as always, I'm one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, and I'm along with. It's the Padawan here, the, the platonic one. I still fucked up. And I'm along with. <laughs> Yo. Yo. It's face. That's all. Gotta get gotta get these. Oh, going on, boy, be in this views, chair nigga. almost took an ill ass pill, boy. God I damn. That's it. God damn, boy. I it was about it. to be ugly. I was about to be the wall you know, and everything. <laughs> I'm being truthful this podcast. How about that, y'all? Hey, hey, look. Here we go. Look, this is what I mean. And and look, and I don't mind being truthful. So if you ever have some questions you want to ask me, I am more than willing to share. Uh, because uh oh, yeah. I, I'm I, I feel like this is this is year three. This is season three. Like, god damn it, we about to pod the fuck oh. out of this year. Like, uh I want to yeah. point out one thing. Yeah, yeah. I want to point out. One one important thing. Notice y'all, I didn't lie on my dick. A lot of y'all would. Oh no, what a lot you of y'all have. I what didn't just lie on my dick. He didn't lie down. Lie on. Dick. on. Lie on. Okay. I thought you said I didn't lie on my dick. I was like, what the fuck you mean? You lie your dick. No, nope, I that? didn't lie. You go ahead. Go to edge your shit up, give your shit a fade, nigga. What the you fuck? Magic shade, nigga? No, nigga, no. I was like, no, nah, nigga, no. <laughs> Uh, nigga, you use magic shave on anything. That shit gonna burn, nigga. Fuck that, nigga. That, that shit gonna be itchy as fuck the next week. Oh, don't don't use magic shave on your face, on your finger, on your. Oh, damn nothing. sure don't use it on any anywhere with sensitive skin. But uh, nah, yeah. nah, damn, leave nah, magic nah, shave damn. alone. That shit is not what's up. That shit is magically gonna turn your shit into some crunchy, itchy shit. Uh, don't put chemicals on your sh on your shit. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, yo. You know the yo. Yo, on God, you know the best thing to shave with is if you can find it some aloe and water. Just aloe. The aloe is good anyway. 
Just rub that shit all on your skin real good. Trim your fucking hair down before you shave, first of all. Don't shave no fucking beard with a razor. Like, actually, like, get some clippers and trim that shit low and then shave. And you'll be fine. A little shea butter don't 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 hurt either, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, don't don't do don't do no goddamn uh, no magic shave on nothing. You gonna be burning. Shea you gonna be burning true. up. Well, look, man, we've been talking about relationships and uh, platonic friends and all that kind of shit. But uh, this is what I wanted to ask tonight, man. This is my topic. I'm gonna just go right into it just to get the conversation started. Um, yeah. Hold on. Did, did we finish the intro? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, I um, this one of them nights, nice, y'all. Uh, T is about to pull a, a double, 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 double. Like I've been kind of doubled up all week, and then I got, I'm basically going to work right after the podcast, and then going to be up all day. Yeah, so yeah, good time. But um, so excuse me if I'm all over the place, but uh, I was watching. Ah, you know me, I be on my YouTube rabbit holes, and. I was watching a podcast and it was like basically a husband and a wife and they were discussing infidelities. Right. And the woman actually said that looking at another person or flirting with them is not cheating. The man said it is. So I just, that's all my topic is. I just wanted to really just bring it to y'all and see what y'all thought. Like is looking at other women in a you know like oh they fine type manner or is flirting with another woman are those things cheating why or why not and you can separate them in the individual or lump them together depending on your preference or how you look at it okay I'll take the floor first folks um so looking I feel there's nothing wrong with looking now if you're with your significant other I feel that looking is disrespectful yeah. While with your other. Now, if not with the other, you can look all you want to because you got ads. But there it's is a certain way to, it's a certain way not to look. You feel me? It's a certain look. We all know that they come here to look, the sexy eye look. You just look like you're looking regular. You feel me? You ain't got to try to look like the come here, like, ooh. You feel me? Like, you, you, understand, you understand the look I'm going for. You know? So you ain't trying to attract it, nothing. You just look it because it look good. But you ain't looking exactly. like from here there you to go. me. There you, you go. You just looking like, oh, that looks good to me. But don't come to as me. far as flirting. As far as flirting, I feel like flirting is definitely a, a form. I wouldn't say cheating, but I, I say it, it's a form of disrespect to the relationship. If I'm mm. because no flirting crosses the line. Flirting cr- opens up doors that shouldn't be open and warrants attention that shouldn't be warranted. So flirting is definitely not a thing that shouldn't be done. But different, there's a lot of different type of relationships and different templates out there now. But in the classical sense of relationship, husband, wife, married, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, in a serious relationship, flirting with the opposite sex. Yeah, I mean, shit. Nowadays, flirting with the same sex, goddammit. Shit, flirting, period. It, it, it's a line that shouldn't be crossed. It, regardless of light flirting, timid flirting, um, flirting that don't matter, flirting that, whatever it is. If it's a type of flirt and you wouldn't want your other, significant other to do it as well, yeah, don't even, don't even attempt to step over that line. But like I said, with you, with you, regards. That's that's regards if you with your mate or not with your mate in their presence, not in their presence. Flirting, regardless, is is a line you should not cross because, like I said, it, it warrants certain attention that shouldn't be there, and it opens up the possibility for doors. You know, because a flirt here may open up a door that shouldn't have been open four months down the road for a situation that shouldn't have been there. You you're flirting in the summer, you may not think something about it. Christmas party come around. It's some innocent shit that happened because y'all done got drunk based off a of flirt from six months ago. Shit happens. So, mm-hmm. yeah, don't don't even take that step across that line. That, that, that's that's an arena that nobody in a relationship or anything serious should even venture towards. True, true. 
Pat. Pat. <laughs> I say base basically face headed on the head. Like as far pause, because somewhere I feel like I gotta say pause. Anyway, looking, if you're by yourself, you can't help but to look because that's human nature. And that's male and female. <laughs> and then that, that cold ass calm face with the glasses on. <laughs> Nigga, man. <laughs> But look, looking, looking is no. But if you're with your woman, whatever, just having common courtesy and decency. Like if you don't want your own woman, or if you're a woman and you don't want your your uh, man or what, whatever, your mate, or when I, if you don't want them to look at somebody else, you don't do the same thing. Like it's, I feel like cheating is whatever crosses the line as far as disrespect pretty much like it, the main thing you hear from a woman when they like in a situation when a man cheated is like don't be out here embarrassing me or making me look like a fool that's basically it don't have them looking like a fool or whatever you don't ever really hear the problem until the other girl decides that they want to be louder in the situation or whatever. The side chick want to be louder or whatever. It's all about respect. So basically, anything could be cheating if the person feels disrespected or whatever. whatnot. But if you're by yourself and you see a girl or whatever, and, or she's by herself and she sees an attractive guy with her, her female friend, as long as you, y'all, you're not, ah, goddamn, the, the beer is, is making me burp. But as long as y'all not blatantly disrespecting each other <laughs> in society or whatever, no, then you, you're fine or whatever. It's the disrespect part that makes it turn into cheating. Like, you know for a fact this is going to hurt your mate in some type of way. That's when it becomes cheating. Pretty much, a lot of stuff is just extinct, like instinctual nature shit. When it comes to like, if you're looking or you, you know, you do certain things, but like, you know, for a fact, you just shouldn't blatantly say with your mate, "Damn, that girl got a fat ass." <laughs> or whatever, unless, unless right. she's one of them types that be will point them out with you or whatever. Because I've noticed I've had types. They'll yeah, point it out so first you sure before you even look at it. <laughs> right. I I definitely agree with both of y'all that flirting is out. Like I I think that flirting crosses the line of going into what you were talking about, Pat. Which is what I agree that cheating is is like when you have disrespected the boundaries that you have agreed upon as a couple or as a you know a partnership. Like, hey, now you cheat. Like we agreed that we. This is what I don't, I don't tolerate. This is what you don't like. This is what you don't tolerate. This is what we not gonna do. You've now done this. Hey, you cheated. You know what I mean? So like, whatever that is, could be kissing for some couples. It could be a simple like, hey, you got a female friend, like we was talking about, or a male friend. Like that could be some couples' version of cheating. You know what I'm saying? So I think I definitely agree there. Um. I think that I definitely agree with y'all too that looking is okay. Like I don't care if my wife looks at other men. Like I, I kind of would think it would be weird her being a straight woman if she didn't. If she didn't, I would think that she was like a lesbian and like then I would have some other type of conversations and we had to figure some things out. Cause if I've been uh that's neither here nor that's neither here nor there. I might be a part of something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh if, if that's the case, then uh some things uh may need to be rearranged. I didn't know about it. You tell me nothing. So uh 
Yeah, I I think unless that's the like, I would definitely have some concerns. Like, why why don't you find other men that try to like? I ain't stupid. Like, I know it's niggas out here to get bitches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you gonna you gonna see one of them niggas and somebody gonna look good to you. Like, what the fuck? I just don't want you out here breaking your motherfucking neck or like doing some shit that's gonna embarrass me or make it obvious. Like, do the same shit I do. Get the quick little glance and keep that shit pushing. Get a quick survey. Boop, 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 boop. And you keep <laughs> moving. It's a quick head to toe and then a toe to head. And if they going past you, then you give them the side, head to toe and the toe to head just to catch the glance. And you can give them that. And you keep it moving. And, and we both saw that you saw it and we keep it moving. And it, all, all is well. But if you are given to come hither look, then now somebody got to get punched. And it ain't going to be you. So now I'm going to jail because I had to beat this nigga ass and he ain't even knows it was coming because you want to act out of pocket. Mm -hmm. So now you got to come come with some bail money. Come on. Come on with <laughs> But uh, I think definitely that. Uh, but this is my question too with that. When you talk about flirting, right, we all agree that flirting is like that's something that crosses the line um, in, in, in any relationship. What is flirting? Like, what do y'all see as flirting? See, that's the weird thing. Flirting always have like a gray area. Because yeah, because there's you, so many you different could, variations. You could be talking and somebody, and, and you're just joking around, but somebody might like take that as you flirting like you can just be nice you can just be be a, a southern gentleman and the people will take that as flirting just because they never experienced that from someone before you know what i mean so I like yeah so it's so. it's like it's it's always a great area with that but it's it's always i would say flirting is in your window like like mm. Something, something in your conversation that gives a sexual energy, some type of way. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Because like you can say something, and you might not even be flirting. You might be joking around, but there's sexual energy in it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's there's something about it. You know what I'm saying? Like you could yeah, just girl, be. Let, you gonna drink all that juice? Yeah, like you, you say the most regular shit in the world, and for some reason, the way you said it, because you were sleepy and you had a couple of drinks in you, it sounds like Barry White. <laughs> hey, <laughs> girl, you want to go to Fuck water? All that. Just because of that, <laughs> I make it my mission. Anybody, and if female, <clears throat> let me see my get my voice clear. Any female trying to be outsidely nice to me, I make sure I'm. An asshole too. Hold on, so nigga, nothing what? Is... Outsidely nice. Can we yeah, can yeah. we uh can we stamp that and put that on a t shirt? Yeah. Outsidely <laughs> nice. That is yeah. we outside. Ass. that's great. Yep. That's great. Yeah, we outside. We outside. Right. Everybody trying to be outside and nice to me. Uh uh. That is great. I'm an outside asshole. Nice. I'm an asshole. So you can't say she can't even think. I was trying to flirt. I don't want nobody in the vicinity looking, hearing. Nope. You can't think shit I said was a goddamn flirt. Nope. That nigga mean. <laughs> yep. <laughs> think it. Think it. My wife know I'm nice. God damn it. That's all I'm burning. You know I'm nice. Fuck everything else. I don't give a fuck. Fuck it. No, I, that's, my, that's my rule of thumb. It, 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 it. Be an asshole. Shit. Just be straight, direct to the point. I don't know you. I don't get. Why are you speaking to me? Bow. Cuts down you on all that I shit. I, I like that you have a tactic. I think that is smart as a like men in relationships out there, a pod squad men in relationships. Take note of what Faye said. He's not just out here like winging it with it so that something could happen. He has an actual tactic to avoid said situation proactively. I I think I definitely have a tactic myself. Uh I treat everybody the exact same that is not my wife so that if you was to say i was flirting then you gotta say i'm flirting with everybody so i'm just omnisexual i'm just 
I treat the tree all night. Oh, yeah, the tree is a king and queen. <coughs> hey, queen, how you doing, king? Oh, you're a lovely rose. Look at you. Oh, sweetheart. I call everybody ma'am and sir or king and queen. So that way it's no like it's just everybody is the exact same title. You can't like whether you seven or whether you 70, everybody get the same shit. So it make the See, I, like if you was if you was about to feel special, you gonna feel real dumb when you realize that oh I'm Lucy. He he said he said good morning to me. He said good morning queen. And then when you see five seconds later, Leroy got that same good morning king. Oh damn! Oh, what the? Uh, okay, never mind then. I'm gonna go on by my day. Shit. I'm type my. I also, I also look angry, so I think it is something that we face it about anger. I think yeah. anger does kind of propel a lot of bullshit and 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 you it. My it good morning even sound angry, nigga. My good morning and my bad saying angry. Good morning, morning, bitch. Bye. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Back. <laughs> Damn, I'm gonna talk morning, to that bitch. Exactly. Don't want to talk to me. Bye, bitch. <laughs> I got enough. I got. I got enough talking to at home. I don't need nobody to talk to me, damn it. You know what? I don't know. I think it's something about I exude my wife. Like I, I kind of exude the fact that look. Don't say shit to me. Don't you try. Don't you look at me sideways. Don't I got you even breathe too. hard. Because I'm going to tell you. I got another tactic. You want to know my other tactic? Every time, a fe- every time a female says anything to me, I always say, well, yeah, my wife told me uh, uh, Ooh, about yep. any topic that we're talking about. <laughs> Ooh, Nick. I'm bringing Ooh, my wife face. into every I'm topic a- I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna put you on well, something that my mama gave my wife, us <laughs> that has been a godsend, and we always take it with us anywhere we go. Where it's some new where people don't know us and don't know, oh, that's the marriage. Like, like this is what we do. So I, I, we always wear it like our first week somewhere. My mama bought us this hubby and and wifey shirt, right? Mm-hmm. And, it, and, and on the front it said, you know, hubby, the definition is, you know, one with her and then the, the wife is one with him and then they got all married. It said married. And then they got the date we was married on the back. Mm-hmm. And it's always a wonderful thing to do. If you ever get a chance to go get one made, you and your wife should do it. It's amazing. What you do is you go to you go to work or you go to your conference or you go to your, your, your whatever you're going to the first day and you just be chilling. And then you just go the second day and you wear that shirt. Mm-hmm. A good 90% of the bullshit kind of just fall off to the wayside immediately. Like, oh, oh, oh okay. He, yep. um, okay. He proclaimed it. All right. All right. Let me, let me go on by my business. That's right, bitch. That's right, bitch. I call it my bitch be gone shirt. It's amazing. <clears throat> Nigga, I started this new job at Amazon, and you know a nigga on a certain oh, day, God. if I got a haircut, a nigga look look like he about thirty two. So, nigga walking in, I, you know, you know, you and then I will be working hard, and you know, got got natural charisma. The, all of the managers and shit like me, so you know, obviously you get them little looks, and and, and you have people kind of good morning you in a little way that make you feel like, hey, ma'am, uh, do I need to call my wife right now? Do she need to pull up? You you know what I'm saying? I got another tactic. I use Y'all understand too. that type of like vibe? It, it ain't it ain't overt. It's more covert. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. But you like, hey, uh, I don't like. I'm gonna go over to this other section. You know what? Hey, excuse me, manager. Can you move me over here? I, I don't like. I don't excuse be me, here. ma'am. You realize those type of looks warrant sexual harassment as well. Don't be yeah, like you feel like you your eyes. a little bit. Ma'am, but you know what? don't be undressing you know me with happened? your eyes, ma'am. Oh, but face, when I tell you, I want my bitch be gone shirt the very next day. <laughs> oh, oh, face, you should have you should have seen the, the, the flies just falling off. It's like it's like wearing the best of bug repellent in the swamp. It's just like, oh, look at you just the mosquito, look at you just falling. Oh, this is great. You know, 
I also, when talking to any females, I talk with my left hand. So you can't shake? Mm -hmm. So you can't shake their hand? No, I talk with my left hand. So you know how people talk with their hands? So their hands are always <laughs> visible. My ring finger is always visible with my wedding ring on it. Aha. Uh -huh. well, it's always up. Hands. I talk with both of them, but I also got a fidget where I just fidget with my ring. So I think most people see that too. But my ring yeah, don't also. About that, my, my problem is my ring don't all the way look like a wedding ring. So like some people be kind of confused. Like maybe he just got a ring on that hand because it fit better. Because I got because because my left my right my right knuckle on my ring finger is big as fuck. Like if I was to hit a nigga with it, it it's good that just the knuckle alone is gonna leave him a major knot. Like the knuckle look like a mallet. Like a little ham bone. Let, let me show y'all my knuckle. I, this ain't got nothing to do with nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is my ring finger. All right. Y'all see the width of that. Mm -hmm. This is my other knuckle. God damn. Do you see it? Did I see, you see that it? bitch bigger than I see Yeah. So, uh, a lot of people just kind of look at my hands and they be like, well, I don't know. Maybe his ring is just a regular ring and he is, you know, just got a big ass. Because his hands are deformed like a motherfucker. <laughs> what you said? Because his hands are deformed like a motherfucker. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't I don't hit a lot of shit. My knuckles been through some shit. I, like, my knuckles are very callous. There's just big knuckles everywhere. But, uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, my wife like it. Um, shit. Oh. Damn it. Wherever I was going with it, I was I got there and I I was just gonna end up retracting and digressing anyway. So go ahead. <laughs> Jesus. I was I was going somewhere with it, but I didn't lost the way. Mm -hmm. I've lost I've lost my way, gentlemen. You 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 guys go ahead. <laughs> Lead on. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Bottom line, y'all don't flirt with people if y'all in relationships. Flirt with your mate. Hell yeah. Hey, hey, uh, I, I'm going to just say it out loud this week. I don't even feel like typing. Y'all go ahead for a second. I got to pee. This nigga going to take the pee break and shit. In the middle of the pub. It's all right. I did too. While he was setting up the topic. Me and I did. <laughs> Same topic, man. It's all about discipline. Like, if you're a truly disciplined man, when you're in a commitment, you focus on that commitment, regardless of what situation you may find yourself in, as long as you're making legitimate decisions and the best benefit of you in that relationship, you should always see yourself on the positive end of any or any situation dealing with the opposite sex. Exactly. Always think if your mate was in the same situation with a, 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 another man, what would you want her to do? Would you be cool with that shit? Hmm? Would you? Would, how would you feel if, if you walked in on that situation? That feel like feel that <clears throat> do that. Change the perspective. Every time you think about doing some, think that your mate is about to walk in the door right then. And if he would still go through with it, regardless if they walk in, you cool then. But nine times out of ten, I guarantee you won't. Because if you truly care about that person, you don't want to see that person have any heartache or any type of pain. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you don't you don't want that shit. They don't want that shit. So put your best foot forward in all situations and think. Think with your brain, not your head. Think with your dick, niggas. <laughs> I bet you won't hit a motherfucker. I'm sorry. As soon as he said, I bet you won't, uh, three six mafia. I don't know. I, don't... I bet you won't hit a motherfucker. This one of episode. Look, you know what? I don't know what to... can y'all title this episode for me because I don't know where we what to call this one. This is uh, I apologize in advance. That, that might be my uh, the... <laughs> there you go. I apologize in advance. Title fine. Boom. There we go. Yo, that's good. 
I apologize in advance. Oh, that's great. That's great. Especially for that oh, first time. Because that is literally what I what I feel like. I'm sorry, Pod Squad. Uh yeah. Just, uh, Niggas be uh, bear with bear with us this week. This one of them weeks where y'all are really getting just one of our conversations. It's just going wherever it's going. I don't it's know where it we're it is. definitely gonna have to join in on any part, goddammit. I definitely got to listen to the first part of this part. Just make sure my um I don't need a lawyer. <laughs> Cuz <'Cause>, god damn. <laughs> anyway, so we done with the last topic? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a fat bitch ate a chuck steak? What time is it? It, it is time for a fat bitch to eat steak in front of a woodchuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a, it's a beef chip. It's a, it's eleven oh two Eastern Standard Time. Episode one oh seven. E E E S T. is about time. Episode one oh seven. Good. The good and for What the fuck? Good and fucking red. Yo, how did that shit just hold on? Yo, that shit, yo, what the fuck? Yo, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How did that happen? Am I tripping? Is that face? Did that shit just pop in his face? Like, how did you make that shit just appear like that? Like it was like literally nothing on his face, and then that shit just popped up. I thought it was a filter or something, or like a sticker. Like I thought it was some like some Instagram type shit where you just like have one of them things, like you you put yourself into a dog or something. You never know. But no, that's a real. What the fuck did you just do, nigga? You You got that one field ass. What the fuck just happened? You Yo, never no, understand. Oh, nigga, y'all just brushing past this crazy shit that just happened. <laughs> you never understand it. Man, stop, stop grinning at me and giggling, nigga. How the fuck did you just do that? <laughs> Dead ass serious. How the fuck did you do that? No, it's I see the mask. mask, nigga. I know it's a mask, but how did you make it appear out of nowhere? I got the mask. I know it's a I mask. Keep telling you how he did it. Like keep telling you how he did it. Fuck that shit come out of nowhere. Pat one. Boom. Yeah, how did you that 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 part? That part, you not you not you acting like that shit won't like what the fuck was that? Am I <laughs> you, you pet, man. No, it's I, normal. Face, I don't know. It's normal, man. The Super Mario <laughs> trailer is hilarious. This nigga acting wild, yo. Like this nigga acting like that shit won't <laughs> fast as fuck or something. Like that shit don't. <laughs> like what the fuck? Just ha- how did you make that happen? Like what was the effect that you used? What did you do? Did you like have like a thing where you had your finger somewhere and you hit it and it snapped down? Like where was it that it popped out? That's all I'm saying. Like face over there on some old. On some, old meta, on some old metaphysical lyrical miracle shit, or you know, he just pet, you know, he just, you know, he just <laughs> his, his, his third, his third chakra from the sun, you know, just made him transcendent, and he then began to illuminate, and you know, it just appeared, you know, that's just what he does. It's just his everyday. Yeah, I got that, but what did you actually do? What was the mechanics behind that shit? How did you do that shit, nigga? No, seriously. Like, can we stop giggling? It was, you it keep running right. at me again. <laughs> it, it was it was already right here. I just like, you know, I just had the camera off and then you know just put it on like normal and then all right. No, boom. no, no, no. All right, do it again one <laughs> more time. Let me see it. Let me, no, no, do the same thing that you did. No, do the same thing that you did. Do the same thing that you did. I need to see it. <laughs> Oh, no, man. you didn't do it that slow. <laughs> <laughs> no. I can't wait. Yo, pod squad. I want y'all to watch this back. The eight of y'all oh, that shit. watch every week. Oh, I want shit, y'all to watch dude. this because I know y'all gonna watch this whole thing on Spotify. And y'all gonna ask no matter of fact, I'm gonna put this on YouTube and everything. Oh, shit. <laughs> what the fuck did Panel One just do? Because they playing me like I'm dumb. And the, the crazy part is. 
I know I'm not dumb. I got IQ test. <laughs> I got I got actual SAT scores. Nigga fell asleep on the SATs and got damn near twelve hundred. Imagine if I stayed awake. Like I, I know my I, I know my brain power, so I ain't about to do this shit with these niggas. These niggas is, is straight disrespecting my intelligence right now with this shit. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and move forward because uh yeah. Right, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'll figure it out. I'll ask somebody else that understand. Like God damn, Episode one hundred seven. Question: All difficult and shit. Damn. It's just you know, it just did like this, and boom, it was on. You know what I'm saying? And then you know, it just took it off. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, the Dave Chappelle attacker was sentenced to two hundred and seventy days in jail after oh, rushing shit. him on Netflix festival stage. <laughs> That's the first part of the fuck. Oh shit! I just wanted to update y'all because I found out about it. We all know I made that video about it, so yeah. Mm. This thing is old. <laughs> this thing is just lost. <laughs> it's just so fucked. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> You laughing don't make it any better. Don't make it any fucking better. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. But uh yeah, uh, Dave well, Chappelle yeah. Tucker got two hundred and seventy days in jail for being stupid As well and having pipe cleaners in his hand. As well as <clears throat> I, I mean, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. He kind of got. He already had his arm looking all crazy and shit. I don't know if he nearly needed more than that. I think the ass whooping was probably enough, actually. But you know, all right. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I'm pretty sure the ass was enough. Man, I seen that picture. Yeah. He about to fall I off. I mean, the you know, at the end of the day, man. Uh, I'm at a point now. I have no. I have no sympathy for anything. You know, I can have empathy. I understand what it's gonna be like for him for them 270 days, but I don't have any sympathy for like I don't have sympathy for people who do stupid shit. Stupid shit should happen to you. So if it hadn't been 270 years, I would have been like, all right, well, you shouldn't have done the dumb shit. Like you should have just set your ass in the audience like everybody else at the fucking place and enjoyed the goddamn joke. But here you go, yeah. <clears throat> hopping your happy ass up there. Well. Oh, you want to get Start with the wrong, get in with the wrong. That's the motto out here in these streets. You know, hey, whatever you start with, that's what's going to come out. Like, what they used to teach in uh, chemistry, like, whatever the inputs are, those out, that's going to be the same outputs. They may be in a different form, but that's going to, like, you can't, like, shit ain't going to just disappear. Like and, and, you got and, oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon transfer. going into some oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon coming out that reaction too. They're just gonna be in a different form, but that's what's coming out. It, 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 you're not gonna get uranium from that. You know what I'm saying? Like that that ain't about to happen. So uh well, going with some bullshit. Hope you get some bullshit out of it. Sir, to South Carolina with you for them 270 days. <laughs> How? How? I don't know how he gonna be like in jail, but don't you shoot that little motherfucker no more. <laughs> there you go. Stop it! Stop it! Quit! I'm gonna kill you! Quit! <laughs> Yo, that is the best. Oh. Yo, I, to this day, I love Harlem. To like, this day, Harlem that is, that is one of the top three laughs you will ever get in comedy like the the genius of whoever that i want to say that little nigga ain't that the little that that's the uh eddie murphy little angry nigga that be uh that charlie murphy had to beat up ain't it um the little nigga the, the same nigga that was in the barbershop with them in uh coming to america right yeah i think so well whoever that little nigga is he is a goddamn Black American All Star, <laughs> the, the, the comedic genius to after the damn machine gun to just shoot that shit twice. That to have to first of all, everybody else has a Tommy gun, 
you have a fucking six a fucking pistol or uh, 380 at that like you got like a fucking six shot pistol and you are that pow pow the fact that like the thought process of that uh, like that who if it won't him whoever thought of that is a fucking genius that's genius on so many levels comedically and it ain't supposed to be you know what's even funnier that people often forget the car ride up until the shootout. <laughs> oh, when he shot the nigga in the back of the head. And broke the motherfucking nose. Now that, that's slapstick. I, I get that. But that pat pat, like that's something, like I can almost guarantee oh, yeah, I dude. bet you that nigga was supposed to be shooting his pistol while them niggas was shooting. And that nigga <laughs> just was like, let me wait till they finish. Pat. <laughs> like just to be like weird and that shit just became like a classic moment and I bet you Arsenio just reacted to that shit don't you shoot that little mother cause he kept doing it and at first ain't nobody react to it though ain't nobody say shit like the first couple times they could just let that shit okay don't you shoot that little motherfucker no more. <laughs> like, I can guarantee you. Like, that seemed like some shit. Arsenio was just like, all right, nigga. You, you, the fuck is you doing oh, in this take? <laughs> and the director was just like, well, <laughs> we got us a good moment. You you know, that's a wrap for the day, guys. <laughs> good shit. Uh, I, that ain't got nothing to do with nothing I know. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I'm i sorry. I keep going Up on. next on the good and fuckery. Right. What is <sighs> I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, did something happen? Uh, I don't know. Pat, you froze it. You look like yeah. a, you look like a painting of yourself, like Bob Marley paint. That's a good Redem redemption song okay. face. <laughs> redemption Pat. That is hilarious to me. I don't know why. Redemption oh God, your redemption song face. Yo, no woman, no cry face ass. Oh, <laughs> oh, Pat Marley. <laughs> Had a one, Marley. That fucking yo. <laughs> this nigga here with that old face I'm sorry, ass internet. I'm sorry, chicken. That old space ass internet he got. Oh man, this has been a great episode, Pod Squad. Uh, forgive me this evening. I have been just enjoying hanging out with my brothers. I don't know why I felt like it's been so long, but uh. I'm just enjoying the vibes, and uh, I know I have derailed this conversation several times, but please forgive oh, me for God. that. Um, we were in the good and fuck career, I know, and we were talking about Dave Chappelle's attacker. Also, on a serious note, all jokes aside, is 270 days too much, or is that just right? What, what where, is, where do you think that falls? Uh, not enough. Give him a full year. Did give you say numbers should be good for a year? No, I said give him a full 365. Give him a full year. And why you say that? You publicly, you publicly assaulted a motherfucker those days. Like, shit. The ass whooping, that ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with the judicial hearing. <laughs> shit. Your crime is still your crime. So you should get your punishment. Got it. So you don't feel somebody. So like if somebody say do something to somebody, they get shot and they go to jail. You don't feel like if they get less jail time, that should be okay. Hell no. Got shot. Hell no. Nigga. You got shot because your ass well, is doing wrong. You getting persecuted for your crime. Shit. Got it. Okay, you compartmentalizing the crime from the actual moral. Mm -hmm. 
the, the moral thing. You got your ass right, shot. Got you. you got your ass yeah. shot for being wrong. You going to jail for being illegal. <laughs> All right. Well, this is legal, but this is kind of on the moral wrong, and I kind of wanted to get your take on it. Uh, since I don't really know where to go with the good and fuckery, because I don't want to fuck up pet shit. I no. do want to ask. Have you have you been looking at this Skip Bayless saga this week with him and Shannon Sharp and him uh I guess disrespecting Shannon Sharp? Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to look at Skip Bay because I really don't like the fellow. I really don't like what he has to say when he when he's talking about African American athletes. You know, I'm a, and I'm not really big into in, in, into app in sports like that. But his comments and his comments, his tone, and like just how he carries different athletes con- continuously. This mm-hmm. this sits sits wrong with me. You feel me? Briefly went over what the the, the thing with him and Shannon, and that once again that ain't gonna, that didn't sit right with me. But the way I view Shannon after pre after several previous incidents and how he's spoken. Up for, I'm not gonna say white people. He's spoken up for them. He's just spoken to to the defense or against certain black topics or certain black people in mm-hmm. the media. So I don't even see him in a certain positive light. But even still, you're not gonna you're not gonna carry a black man on national TV. And act like it's all cool. You feel me? Like, I'm sorry, I'm still a black man. Regardless of how I feel about this black man, ain't nobody from outside the culture gonna disrespect him publicly. Like, you feel me? Like, I, it's just gonna sit, sit wrong with me, regardless of how I feel about him. I, I, I feel. I can talk shit about my brother, but you can't. I'll fuck you, you up. You, you feel me? You, you feel me? Yep. Mm. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, I think. Pat, did you want to chime in on this? We talking about uh, Skip Bayless and his uh, kind of disrespect towards <laughs> Shannon and Sharp this week, and just his overall. I see that demeanor and your overall thoughts on on him and his, the situation this week. But your overall thoughts on. Uh, I feel like I've been watching the video because I knew you were bringing it up today or whatever. So I saw the video of it. I actually saw it when it actually happened. Well, not like on the show, but like when they showing it on the internet. But oh, he, yeah, I, don't, I, I feel like I feel like Skip is just another average white man. Where it or, or whatever to the point where sometimes with them, it's like they feel like they got to top whatever you're saying, or they'll say or they have like this arrogance in them that just because you're not fully part of my culture that I'm from, you don't have the same amount of knowledge as I have. Like if in layman's terms, he comes off like I'm me, I'm, I'm this white person. You don't know what I'm talking about. Like that's how the way he come off or whatever. And just because I feel like this I feel like Tom Brady is the greatest person in the world. I feel like I have a right to disrespect anybody under his actual stats. But to um I feel Shannon on his end because they he's like he tried to play it along like nothing that Shannon did amounted to anything or whatever. And just the simple fact that you made it to the NFL. The simple fact that you like made it to Super Bowls and everything, I I think that is not that many people on earth that can actually say that, that have like that privilege to freaking say that. So you should give him, yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, and you, Skip, are nowhere near that percentage. Period. I've seen that. I also seen him and Jalen Rose go at it a lot or whatever. Yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was a, bit back, a bit back in the day, but yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I noticed that was a big thing once in a while, before, like once before too. And I think he like reacted to the thing with Shannon and Skip or whatever, where he peeped that it seemed like well that and media in general, I feel like they can say whatever they want to say about <clears throat> black people. Or whatever they can point out every freaking fault or whatever and all we gotta and they just give us uh slavery was over it 400 years ago get over it vibes that's how they give it like anytime we point them out on some fuckery that they do or whatnot they give us the slavery is over with i didn't own any slave vibe off of it like no but you still disrespected me as a human being if I was to do the same shit to you or whatever it would have been a whole it would have been some bullshit or or whatever you would have probably said I'm anti-Semitic and and told me I had to do a whole list of shit (coughs) pretty Mm. much Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say this man Uh, I come at it from two different perspectives first of all I look at it from Shannon's perspective um all right, um, Tiz take. So I think uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about this online, but I haven't seen a lot of people actually give their real like analysis of like the kind of the larger implications behind this. So you got Shannon, right? What would be considered the stereotypical strong black man by society standards as far as the look, right? But he also has mm-hmm. a lot of the uh, stereotypical uncle uncle remus uh sambo type vibes wherein he's said things disparaging about you know not dating black women and a black women can't do nothing for him etc he's you know he even in this situation him not holding skip more accountable mm-hmm. and letting it slide past that mm-hmm. moment as if that wasn't something serious like I got to work with you, bro. Pass the racial tones, like, and I'll get more into that when I get into Skip, but pass that, like, as a man, like, there's a certain, like, if if I've, it's one thing if we just joking, right, or if, if we in a debate and we both cool, and we both getting heated, but we both cool with what each other saying, but once you said, like, all right, you, you disrespected me, oh, my bad. It's nothing wrong with just saying I'm sorry. Like, oh, like, why would you double down on that that moment? And this is a man that Skip has called his friend. So before you even get to the race, like, if this your friend, if your friend telling you, hey, you, you, you crossing the line right now, stop. Just fall back real quick. Just go move on to the next topic. Like, don't, you ain't got to hurt. You You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that was that. So Shannon kind of being complicit in that. He furthers the stereotype of the let me bow to you, Massa. You just okay, Massa. Mm-hmm. You beat me yesterday, <laughs> but today I pick a new cotton it. for you, Massa. You know what I'm saying? That type of vibe. On Skip's hand, though, something that I don't hear people talk about enough is Skip has given us the blueprint of why he is the way he is toward people in general and towards black people, especially. When Skip talks about his upbringing, right, he always talks about his first experience with a black person being with his housekeeper. I think her name was Adam Adabel or something like that. But she was like the housekeeper nanny type person in his household. You feel what I'm saying? So like your first interaction with a black person as a small child was in a, was with a black person in a subservient role. So even if you like this black person, it's no different than the mm-hmm. slave master's kids who love Mamie, <clears throat> but would still yeah. grow up to own Mamie and be okay with that. Because even though you like her, you like her for the utility of what she may have provided to you. And even might have liked her as a person, but you still saw her in a subservient role to you in your life. So your first interaction with a black person is that. 
then you go on to become an athlete, but you don't get a lot of burn. Right. You you end up having your struggles with the coach or whatever. You score two point some points per game and all that shit. You play JV in 11th grade. Like, what the fuck? Like all that shit, whatever. For whatever reasons that happens to you. But you also grew up in the era where Jerry Jones was taking that fucking photo. So that means you're growing up in the era where it was very segregated. You're growing up in Oklahoma City, which is a very, at especially at that time, but still today, a very southern and old school Bible built, old school slavery type of area. Like, let's just call it what it is. Especially in the time when Skip was growing up. So you have him growing up in the full context of all of this and that being the backdrop of his first conceptualization of what it is to be have a relationship with black people. You then fast forward to he becomes, because he couldn't become the athlete he wanted and follow that dream, he becomes a writer, right? So now you're in a field where you are constantly writing about these amazing black athletes who are doing the things that you wanted to do on the baseball field and in the basketball court and wherever else, but you can't. And I really feel like over time, what's happened is he's started to latch on to anything that makes him feel like it's close to what he could have been. So that's why he loves Tom Brady, because Tom Brady reminds him of him. He's the underdog. He's the dude that nobody thought could do anything. He's Mr. Irrelevant. Didn't get picked high in the draft. Nobody thought anything much of him, but he made his way up by his bootstraps. He's white. He's white bread, American, middle of the, middle America. You know what I'm saying? He's everything Skip wants to be. Tim Tebow, another person. He latches on to him. Baker Mayfield. Tim Tebow, like, Skip constantly latches on to either the agreeable black Negro, i.e. a Ray Lewis, who's known for buck dancing. But any black man that is known for pushing against the established dominant culture, right, i.e. a Terrell Suggs, i.e. a Richard Sherman, i.e. a Terrell Owens, i.e. a Jalen Rose, i.e. keep going down the list. He always seems to have a problem with these black, i.e. a LeBron James. He always seems to have these major problems with or try to find some way to diminish what they've done. And that's his biggest thing. He always throws the gun at somebody else's personal accomplishments. But whenever somebody brings up his, he gets, well, that's kind of a low blow, don't you think? And you don't have to get personal. And I'm just stating the fact. No, you're not. You're stating your opinion. You have a, a, a biased as skewed. As much as you want to say that you a white ally, you have a very biased as racist view of black men, especially black men who are doing better than you in things that you want to be great at. You might be cool with the black man that's great at business because that might not have been your aspiration. But black men who are very great at sports and who don't have a problem with telling people of a dominant culture that they're not going to just stand for what they going for like oh you you always find a way like you diminish everybody and, and you constantly do it you you try to you you would throw a compliment in there then throw some backhanded shot at them and that's what skip is but a lot of people don't tie that shit to the fact that like his first interaction with black people was a black person in a subservient role to him so that's how he sees us that's the lens he has of us before he even developed past that like that's that that's a huge factor in why we always get that vibe from him and why black people get that vibe from him and why he constantly emote it, 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 it emits that. <sighs> I, I hear you saying stuff like, yeah, you, you know, you, the black lives matter and all that, but some ain't right. Some ain't right. That's what it is. That's the probably test why test. he, it's probably why he gives me that I'm better than y'all attitude to me. I, every time I've seen him, he gives me that snooty, I am way more intelligent and I am a better 
just from a better breed than you. You know, like, I just sensed that from him. It's never been a time where I looked at him and he just seemed like he he didn't have that vibe at all. And, and, and mind you, he comes from dirt poor ass, but, but humble ass beginning. So he ain't coming from like, oh, I was silver spoon. But it's just the fact that even in that, his first interaction with a black person was they were lower than him in his mind, in his mm-hmm. household, the way they were treated, looked at, and discussed, obviously, were in a subservient role. And, and that's what he and that's what he carries. And you can see it. It seeps out of him. He can't help it. He be trying to fight that good fight and be and, and play the role. And then it always comes out. I'm always gonna go with him against anybody. You're not better than like what the fuck does him his accomplishments got to do with the fact that Tom Brady having a bad year? Stick to the fact, but you can't because that shit mm-hmm. get emotional when they start talking about them white people because they feel like they're talking about you. Mm-hmm. They feel like they talking about them two point one points or whatever it was that he scored that won't shit that Jalen Rose mm-hmm. talking about. You sorry, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, son of a bitch. Talk all that cash shit about fucking professional athletes. How dare you? Like, I'll talk facts about a professional athlete, but I ain't about to sit there and be like, oh, you're garbage and you're the worst ever compared to other people in your league. Yeah. But you ain't, you ain't about to hear me talking about like, oh, like I'm the shit compared to you. No, nigga, you got it. It's a reason you made a pro in my ass sitting here in the house. Like, it, it, people be, like niggas be tripping, and I say mm-hmm. niggas in the in the format that face has laid out on this show. Where it don't matter what you what color, it's just you would skip use a nigga, nigga, use a nigger, straight like that. Skip Bayless. I had to bleep that out probably when I put it on YouTube, but damn it, I mean that shit. Well, no, because they don't care about nigga. They only care about stupid shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, you use a snippet of that music that was four seconds long from this. On. Fuck. All right, I'm gonna go ahead before I get a uh, show cancel or get us back shadow banned. <laughs> let, let, let's go ahead. Um, I, you know what, man? I ain't gonna even. I ain't gonna even carry this no further. Pat, say the rest of them, them topics for next week, man. Like at this point, we we it's it's pushing late, and I gotta wake up early in the morning. I gotta go to work at uh, four thirty in the morning, and I commute, so I gotta get up at like two. And uh, it was a slow news week anyway, to tell you the truth. Our conversation earlier was more exciting than the shit that I had for the good. I, I, I tell you what, we all gonna talk about next week. Did y'all see Umar on the Breakfast Club? I have been seeing a lot of Umar lately. Yes. Umar countdown coming soon. We got he's back. Mm-hmm. He's back, y'all. Oh shit now. And Stephen A responded to that nigga. Oh and shit. Nigga Umar. So so yeah, we're gonna talk. I got an Umar update for the first time in a year. This nigga. Talk about and the first, this is the first week I didn't have anything on the Yay report. He must have got sleepy. Must have actually went to sleep. I hope so, and I'm glad because I didn't want to talk about yeah. that. Nigga. He's getting like I Will Smith it. was for a second. You know what I'm saying? Now I do want to talk mm-hmm. about that Will Smith movie Emancipation when y'all watch it, but I don't oh, yeah. want to talk about him from a relationship or a personal standpoint. I literally just want to talk about the movie if y'all get a chance. Um, got you. What the fuck is it? What the fuck is it on? I can't remember what it's on. What did I watch that shit on? I got a free trial on something. God damn it. I figured out and I'll shoot the information to y'all. Y'all, y'all know I'm it's, it's one of them nights, man. It's late. It's late. And you gotta Yo, work, I, I so. ain't I ain't had a lot of sleep as it is, and I'm not gonna have a lot of sleep tonight. Mm-hmm. So I'm I think it's just I'm getting delirious, and the more I stay up, it's just like getting like <laughs> oh, I know how that feels. Yeah, like I'm I getting know back how that deep. feels. Like my brain I is getting. Right. I feel like I got CTE. 
Excuse me. I don't mean uh, it in a bad way. Let, let me not be disrespectful. Let me take that back. <clears throat> I feel like I have something going on where my brain is getting fogged. Not that, because that can, that that has been traumatic for some people. Uh huh. But yeah, my bad. True. But yeah, let me let me go ahead and get the fuck off this podcast before I uh, say some more shit that's gonna get us canceled. Uh. uh the, y'all got a black business this week? Nope. Well, in that case, <laughs> hey, people out there, Podscar, if you want to give us money, please do. Buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. You can donate for as little as a dollar or go to Cash App, dollar sign partner tiers one. Or you can sign up for $4.99 a month and become a monthly supporter on Spotify and anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partners. All right. That's how you can give us money. If you want to give us money and you want some back for it, I actually have some coming to me in the mail very soon. You, hey, face, tell them how they can give us money and get some back for it. Well, you can go online and you can go to rtrayclothing.com. That's rtrayclothing.com. I'll spell it for you. A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. And no, over here, we won't be spelling clothing for you. So once again, that site is rtrayclothing.com. It's the only place to get official Pod Squad merchandise. The only place to get Podness Podcast merchandise. The only place to get, of course, Rtray Clothing merchandise. Come check us out, man. It's mm-hmm. worth a look. Get you a Podness hey. hat with an AC83 hoodie and some motherfucking uh, Rtray Clothing slides. Like mix and match it. You can do the you can do a whole a whole vibe with it and just you know vibe it out. Or you can you know, just show up with your whole fucking AC eighty three sweatsuit on, you know. However you want to do it. You do that thing, you know, put your partner socks on, throw your face socks on, you know, get you a pet hat. You know, all that good shit. But uh make sure you do that. And then after you finish giving us money, whether you got something back or not, whether you got just a you know a great podcast for the week, or whether you got, you know. A nice fit for the week. Um, Pat, how can they talk to us? At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That's at sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. And that is the Twitter. That's the Instagram. That's the Twitch. Um, Am I missing one? Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. Facebook. TikTok. And Facebook is Tiz Face Pat, all the partners. I forgot forgot TikTok. Also, but. also, website is back up. Still doing some maintenance on it. Uh, trying to simplify it, make it a little different. Uh, but got some things going with it. Um, we'll have the new and improved uh store info up there and the link for that, so y'all can go ahead and do that. I'll have a new donation link up uh soon. Give me about a week on both of those. And uh, yeah, so you can now go back to the partners.com if you forgot all of this shit. You can go there right now and just click a link and it'll take you to one of the uh, links that we talked about. And yeah, do that. And then, um, yeah, I think that's about it, man. It's been probably one of the wackiest episodes that y'all probably gonna ever get from us. Um, but uh, it's been one of the weeks. Uh, I've been smoking, uh, don't have a lot of sleep, and uh, I've been all over the place. So thank God, uh, I have my brothers here. And I and this is not a solo podcast. Thank God it is a trio, cause God damn it, y'all have carried the fuck out of this one. Um, but uh, otherwise it would have been a whole bunch of like one liners and me laughing for like twenty minutes, and then another half of a liner, and then just me laughing again. So, amen. Thank y'all. Uh, but yeah, this has been your week. Other partners, hope y'all enjoyed this conversation. If you had any thoughts or comments or, you know, you agree with us, disagree with us on anything we talked about tonight, or you just want to tell me how much I was tripping, put it in the comments below, please, please, please. And whatever platform you're listening on, make sure that you go ahead and you subscribe and you share it. And uh, if you're on YouTube, make sure that you actually go ahead to our playlist of other of all of our podcasts or go to one of our other mini playlists. Go check out some smell theory. Go check out one of Pat's worlds. Go check out one of the goddamn uh, quick hits we got for you. Well, you can catch a quick clip of some stuff that we done put together for you. Go check out the live streams. Go, go look check at some out shit. something. Put the playlist on and let it ride. We need to watch time hours. We're trying to get monetized. Uh, we've already got monetized on on Anchor, but uh, you know that can be slow. So, yeah, holler at us. It's a thousand of y'all that uh 
I subscribe. So go ahead and uh, you know, help your boys out. And uh, yeah, as always, man, this has been the partners. I've been one third of the partners. Your boy Ted. I'm along with. Well, hey, guess you're along with face. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and I was not looking at the screen. I swear to God, behind these shades, my eyes were closed. So uh, (laughs) I did not realize it was just me and face. But hey, face. Well, uh, face has been here with me. And uh, as always, you know, the the, third of the partners, you know, uh, the makes of the triangle. Pat was here as well. Y'all saw him. Y'all heard him. Y'all listen to yeah, me. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I heard. Uh, but you know, Patrick's got some cool new at home. So, uh, he ain't did. no telling what happened to Pat. Uh, he probably had to, you know, go out and go back in. And uh, yeah. as always, man, we've been the partners. And uh, we love y'all, niggas. Peace, motherfuckers. Pat, I hope you knee deep in some pussy. Peace, y'all. Have a great week. Christmas episode coming soon, y'all. Peace out, man. Oh, oh. Oh.